Hey, what's happening everybody? Charles Maring here and today we're in my studio and I'm working on the new Lumix G9 and I want to talk a little bit about workflow and how we work tethered to our laptop within our workflow. But first, let's cut to the intro. <laughs> So we have a pretty creative workflow that we've worked out in our studio. We've been photographing portraits and weddings and all sorts of commercial assignments for so many years. And one of the things that we have figured out is how to make these things really seamless and working and flowing for both us and our client and the experience that we provide here in the studio. And so having come back from WPPI and working tethered on a Lumix G9 in the trade show booth, I kind of had this epiphany where I said, okay, when I get home, I want to be tethered. I want to simplify our workflow even further, and we've done just that. And so I thought I would walk through kind of our tethering process and what we do here within our own studio. So let's get rolling here. I'm going to go over here to the, com to the camera, and let's see. Here's what we're working on. Lumix G9 up here. Let me kind of give you the, the lowdown on everything that you're looking at here. This is a Bogan CS1. Uh, tripod here and I've this is left over from the old days when I used to work with big Hasselblad cameras and whatnot but I really found that it's an ideal tethering solution as well because I can raise and lower the camera with ease my laptop is always on the same level as we are I can go vertical or horizontal with my G9 here in the studio and let me kind of give you a rundown of how we're tethered here to the laptop now first and foremost I have a uh, tether tools cable here via USB 3 out and it's going all the way to the other side here and going in via USB to our laptop. I have secondarily coming out of here just so you're aware of how we're doing this. This is coming out of the HDMI port of the camera into a Sling Studio cam link and this is how I'm able to do all of these live broadcast and educational things and share. And so that gives me the in-camera view when we do our live broadcast. Uh, I have down below just Velcroed uh, a Lacy or Lacy drive uh, coming out of the laptop here. That's where I'm going to save all of my footage as it gets downloaded to the laptop from the camera. And again, I have another Sling Studio Hub here connected to the HDMI out port on my laptop. And that's going to allow me to share kind of the in-computer view of everything that we do. So. Let's get moving on how to make this happen. Now, let's dive into the computer first and share what we have to do to get everything up and running. Now, Lumix has come up with this really fantastic Lumix Tether software, which you can use standalone if you wish. I happen to use Lightroom in our sales presentations and whatnot, so I ultimately want to get the photographs into Lightroom before we go into a sales meeting uh, with clients, sometimes immediately after the session. So this is going to allow me to do that. Now, first and foremost, we have to turn on our camera. Let's do that. And when I do that, it comes up with a little thing that says um, PC storage, PC tether, pick to bridge. I, I want to select PC tethered. I'm just going to do that right on the back of the screen there. And then let's jump into our laptop here. Now, I don't have anything open as of yet, but I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. I'm going to go down and I'm going to open the Lumix Tether software. And that's pretty much going to find my camera automatically. So it makes it really easy because as soon as I turn on the camera, I choose PC tethering and it's going to find it automatically. I'm going to click here for live view and you'll see exactly what is inside of my camera at the moment and all the bells and whistles. Let's go over this software just a little bit. Now here uh, on the uh, live view screen, I can choose all sorts of things. Like, do I want to show the level gauge? Do I want to show a grid? Do I want to show uh, the, like a guideline, histogram, uh, all sorts of different things here. I can change, change my aspect ratio. I can, you know, rotate the screen if I want it to go either way. So that's pretty helpful. And then I'm going to jump over to the uh, G9 scenario here and we'll just kind of open this up. And this is where I see all of my camera settings, my f-stop, shutter speed, ISO, Kelvin temperature. All of that can be changed either in the camera while you're tethered or um, here via the laptop. 
uh, exposure compensation. We're shooting RAW today. You can also shoot RAW plus JPEG. Uh, and it just kind of shows all the different settings that are in the camera. Now, to get this to work for us though and to save the files in a specific location, I'm gonna have to go in here and actually choose a, choose a folder for it to send the photographs to. So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick as well. Jumping back in. So basically, I'm gonna save these out to my little external hard drive here and we'll just create a folder. We'll call that folder uh, G9Live, just as an example. And I'm gonna go in here. I'm actually gonna create another folder and just call it raw. And so I have kind of a place to put my files, if you will. And then I can just uh, kind of close that out. And now I'm gonna navigate to that. So I'm gonna go down to settings here and I'm gonna say, reference and I'm just going to navigate to that space on my drive there it is okay and then go into raw and I'm going to say open and now I'm just going to say save and now that's going to put all of the photographs as I take them into that folder uh, and let's let's kind of share with you really quick taking a photograph and show you how that works now I can certainly work this from camera or I can actually take the pictures from the laptop if I wish as well. Let me show you that. So in here with the Lumix software, I can actually take a photograph right then and there and see it. And it'll pop up here and I can, you know, uh, stretch it out here if I want to take a look and zoom in and see, you know, is it, what's the detail of it, what's the color, so on and so forth. So you've got all of this functionality in the Lumix Tether software to do what you need to do if you wish. But I really want to get things into Lightroom because that's what I'm used to working with. So I'm going to come up here and I am going to launch uh, Lightroom Classic. Open this up. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to share, I'm going to tell it where the photographs are going to be. So I'm going to go to Auto Import, Auto Import Settings. And then I'm going to choose the folder where I want the, where the photographs are here. Go back to there, G9 Live, RAW, and choose, it's not gonna let me do it because there is actually an image in there right now and that is kind of a quirk here that I've noticed with Adobe Lightroom. So hide Lightroom, I'm gonna go back into this folder because I took a photograph and back in and I'm gonna now move that to trash and we'll go back into Lightroom once again auto import, auto import settings, and then we're gonna choose what is the watch folder. We're going to make the watch folder that raw folder where I'm putting all the photographs. And then where do you want the photographs to be moved to? You can choose a place for that as well. I'm just gonna go back in here and say on G9 Live, I'll create another folder called raw2. And then once Adobe picks them up, it'll move them over to here as well. So here we go, boom. Now when I take a photograph, what will happen is not only will it show up in the Lumix software running behind us here, but it will also appear right here in uh, Photoshop as well, where we can actually work on the file and navigate it and whatnot. Uh, which makes it really simple and really easy. So I'm gonna ask my wife to come out here. We're gonna just take a couple of portraits here in the studio uh, and just kind of show you how things operate here. So Jennifer, you mind coming out? I'm interrupting her work here, but uh, hopefully she'll forgive me. You mind standing in for a couple images? Cool. So Jennifer's kind of standing in here. This is my in-camera view that you're looking at right now. And you know, I can always just adjust everything for level, make sure everything's working out. I'm just gonna take a quick photograph of her from camera, click. And now in a moment here, we'll see it pop into Lightroom. Let me jump over to the Lightroom angle and you will see it kind of starting to populate here. And of course we're working in RAW and that gives us a lot of opportunity because you know, when we're working with RAW and the reason that I work in RAW rather than JPEG for everything, weddings, portraits, so on and so forth, is that if I work in JPEG, everything's baked in. I don't have the option 
to control my images in, in a way that allows me to have detail in my highlights, detail in my shadows at all times. So I'm just gonna jump into this image and show you what I would do here. Now, if you look up at the chandelier here, um, we're losing a little bit of light detail. So if I, because I shot raw, I can actually tone that back. I can lift the shadows a little bit as well in this image, kind of brighten up the background if I wanna have more, more room back there and adjust exposure. And so that simply, I can actually go through and adjust all of my settings to my files. And so what our workflow would be is as we take the photographs, uh, we have them all popping into Lightroom, but then a lot of times after our sessions, we sit down and show the photographs via a big screen television right after the session. And so shooting directly into Lightroom helps us to do that quickly because as the client's getting all of their clothes kind of wrapped up and together, I can then go through and single star all of my favorite photographs. Uh, and that way, as I sit down with them uh, to show their photographs on the big screen, they're able to see kind of the best selects of the day because I tend to get pretty trigger happy when I'm working with the cameras here and I take a lot of photographs and sometimes multiples of the same exact moment or look. And so this allows me to kind of narrow the focus pretty quickly. So let me show you how I do that. I'm gonna take a few more photographs of Jennifer here. Let's see, let me bring her in. In camera angle here and click here. Let me just zoom in for one also. Kind of zoomed in there, boom. And I'm loving this facial recognition here that's on the Lumix camera. What I love about facial recognition is it just takes a little bit of uh, my job and makes it a little bit easier. I can go wide here, click, boom, find her again. Cool, I'll zoom back in for one more. Boom, cool. Well, that one wasn't quite on. Let's try that again, ready? Let me go back in and boom. And thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate you helping me out there. Anytime. All right, um, so let's see. Let's dive back in here. So let me talk about my workflow when it comes to selecting things. One of the things that we do is I will go through these photographs and I will use in the library mode kind of this survey mode here. And what that allows me to do is to shift, click, and select multiples or to command click and select singles. And I can bring them in and out. And so as I go through the photographs of, of the shoot I just did per se, let me just start from number one, is I will single star by hitting the number one and it'll set a rating to one and let's just kind of go through and say, oh, that one's good, that one's sharp, set the rating to one, good, set the rating to one. Let's, and then I'll maybe zoom in, is that in focus? No, I was off. No, I was on, okay, so we'll set that rating to one. And, and so once I get my number one selected, I can then just go down to show me rated only in the lower right, and it will bring up only the photographs that I rated. And then when I sit down with my client, what makes it easy is I can bring them up on the screen for them in survey mode, and they can make their decisions. Because when you look at photographs side by side, the one thing that I've learned is it's very easy for everyone to go, I like that one better than that one. And so then what I'll do is I will say, well, if it's a maybe, let's two star it. If it's a definite, let's two star it. And then we'll run through them one last time and then they'll make their selections based on what their favorites were. And so that's kind of our workflow here in the studio and how we're able to be tethered, have all the images coming into Lightroom automatically, and then be able to show this via a big screen and sit down with our clients and show them immediately after the session uh, in a lot of instances uh, when we don't have to do compositing and things of that nature for them to select their photographs so that we can actually close the loop, have them go home knowing they love the photographs and be done with it. So with that said, that's a wrap on today's talk about tethering with the Lumix G9 a little bit about our workflow here in the studio. Hope that's helpful for some of you out there that are trying to make their way as photographers in a portrait studio and uh, uh, this is one way that you can do it very successfully and very easily. We appreciate you everybody. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and reach out to us with any questions or ideas for topics so that we can put together shows that are helpful to you uh, in your growth. Have a great one everybody.